Can you hear us? Yes. Yay! Okay, good. We're trying something new because whenever we like export these, our audio is really, really low, I think, because we sit far away from the camera. So we put mics on this time. Like the situation, the cord situation <laughs> over here is it's... a lot. Um, but we don't know if it will oh work. God. This is the first time. I'm like a grandpa right now trying to figure out how to get my phone to work. I'm loving the long hair, by the way. Yeah. Thank you. It's, it's nice. so nice. It's nice to see you all. It's nice to see you too. I'm so glad that this worked out. I'm very excited. Because it's been a while. It's been a minute since the last time we saw you. Yeah, it's been like a... A whole election cycle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it has. It feels like a literal lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, are, are things uh, feeling a little less horrific? In this I should say that uh, Mikey's joining us from Chicago, so not Canadian. So no. kind of like in a whole different world. Yeah, though I wish I was there. It would probably feel a lot safer um you know i keep telling uh, all of, like the american <laughs> residents i'm like we we joked so much about just building a bunch of tents and having everybody live here forever we really should have just uh done that, done that? <laughs> yeah no for sure it's funny because i always like when i did the residency i remember i think i went to another resident's house to eat or something and they were talking about like their excitement for bernie sanders at the time and that for some has like always stuck with me like throughout that like one memory <laughs> i mean like of course everything else but i always thought that was like huh that's maybe when he started his his fame yeah uh, i think so during the time that you were here yeah that was kind of like the uptick of his on the weird bernie sanders subject my facebook feed is just bernie sanders memes of him and like the kitten mittens like sitting places yeah <laughs> That's i haven't you, been you on facebook, facebook so i don't know it is literally it... every single post is bernie sanders right now mm -hmm. weird oh, yeah. but goodbye donald trump <sighs> finally God. yeah no kidding um yeah, so, I mean, things are a little less crazy here, but we are in, a, mm -hmm. like, a stay-at-home order. So that is feeling... I mean, it doesn't change our... We haven't really left our home in a year now. <laughs> no, no, it changes us. It doesn't, like... We don't run a residency anymore. No, I know, but I mean, like, in terms of, like, our day-to-day -day for the past, like, 365 days, it doesn't feel that different. No, no but it doesn't. But it's, like, knowing that it is there does feel different, even though it doesn't directly yeah. impact... I don't know if that makes any sense, but yeah. Yeah. How has that been for you all? Um, a little weird. Like not having residents feels weird. It's been 10 years of running a residency program. So oh this is the longest I have never had housemates or roommates ever mm -hmm. in my entire life. And it feels, that feels really good, but it also feels really sad because the residency was something really special that Chris and I enjoyed. Like hanging out mm -hmm. with other artists was like a big part of our life for a long time. And now... Now, now it's just her and I. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge it is change. different. Really? How has it changed for you? Because you do a lot of like community art work. So is that all online? I guess like let's let you introduce yourself. <laughs> um, sometimes I actually forget that I'm not just on a FaceTime chat with people and that like other yeah. people are here. Um, so yeah, introduce yourself and mm -hmm. what you do, and then we can go back to that question. Cool. Well, I'm Mikey. Um, I use he and they pronouns. Um, I'm an art therapist and teaching artist in Chicago. Um, and so a lot, of, a lot of my work started making like um, plushies like this. So cute. Then, I love them. I know, this one. So a lot of teens really like Furbies, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, in an attempt to relate to young people, I started making Furby plushies. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> um, it started out with plushies, but then I shifted into doing like mental health stuff and community-based art. 
um, for a while, a lot of it was like in the community. So that would look like doing, I did a craftivism workshop with teens at like a Catholic high school, which was weird. Craftivism. Um, that is such a wonderful title. Yeah. It's based off this art crafter, Betsy Greer. Um, yeah. She has like a whole book about it. Um, it's basically like, using crafts as like a form of activism love that and so like the teens all like embroidered um like a social issue they were passionate about um another one was like called pride quilts with lgbtq elders and so each elder had like a quilt square Mm -hmm. and then with each square they kind of embroidered or used applique um to kind of like show their kind of form of pride and also sure share that was a weird word <laughs> they're like stories of like their identity and how um what it was like for them as a young person and now what it's like as an elder and kind of like the discrimination they faced how um, many people were part of that quilt i think it was like six or seven Oh, cool. Um, nice. And then it shifted to like an open. So a lot of my work has really sh- been like about crafting. <laughs> and so like that we, sh- we shifted into like a crafter noons group where it was just like myself and a bunch of gay elders hanging out, um, <laughs> like making things. But crafts are cool that way because they they've always been like gendered and like kind of seen as like a form that's been less than. And so been cool to like reclaim that and make it queer yeah Um, well I think it's also what I love about craft is because it's kind of seen as like a lesser form of making which I really don't if anybody is actually like a serious (laughs) maker of a craft they it must be so frustrating because it is just as challenging as any Mm -hmm. other form of making um but it does kind of lend itself nicely to like this idea of accessible. So mm. people that don't feel like they're artists aren't intimidated oh, yeah. by participating in like a craft project. So it's, I think it's like a nice way to sort of like reach out to a community that might normally steer away from like creating because it's a bit of a vulnerable space to work in. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're like embroidery, I get that. I could do that. You know, it's just stitching. Um, And then you can kind of like bring them in and be like, okay, here's how we make embroidery more than you might have thought it was, which is pretty cool. Yeah, no, I second all of that. It does make it feel like safe and accessible. And Mm -hmm. um, it's like radical, like radical softness because it's like soft. But then like when you get up close, you're like, oh, dang, this is like, sharing something impactful right now yeah Um, well even the like typeface pieces that you're doing now which I mean maybe that was part of your practice when you came but I don't remember it but it has like a I mean it it does even though it's like flat 2d work it feels very soft and like huggable (laughs) um but then like the messaging is like impactful and important and like just says a lot but like it's also so accessible because you look at it and you're like oh my gosh I want to like be laying in all of these fonts and then you're like oh and they're also telling me an interesting message so I'm, I'm loving them thank you yeah that definitely came out of this COVID time of um because of co- like because of COVID I have like a million well, I guess I could show you. I have like a yeah, million. Yeah, let's do the studio. A million oh, plushies man. in my like area. Oh my Sorry, this gosh. is weird because I can't. And so, well, I guess this is just, it's not as impressive as Phoebe's studio, which I was like, well, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I, I feel like this is just uh, as fun. It's just a different kind of fun. Yeah. That's like a little craft area. Can we come up close to some of those plushies? I'm trying to, I feel like I'm, I should have practiced a little bit better. (laughs) It's okay. I feel like, 
Um, that's kind of what's happening with these lives is that it's, we just sit stationary and have our yeah. phone on a tripod yeah. and like do nothing. Um, and then we make the guests do all of this like heavy lifting for us. So thank you. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I'm down for it. These so the, are some. The little like sponge bobby there. Yeah. Is it printed on? How has it got that? So How are you making that? <laughs> this one was made. <laughs> now I'm doing a puppet show. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> These were printed with spoon flour. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But originally, I should have brought them out. I had done a bunch of screen printed ones where I hand screen printed them and then painted on them, like Hey Arnold and Gerald and um, little like Millhouse and dresses. Oh, but cute. love it. I couldn't. The thing about spoon flowers, I was able to make a a bunch because I was at the time I was thinking I was going to be doing like a craft show in DC, but because of COVID, it got canceled. Um, right. and so these I love the um. I don't. It looks like Princess Bubblegum to me, but I don't know who it actually is on the end there with that's like larger and she has like a lot of kind of like applique elements on the surface like a oh, yeah. bow and a little like her little eyes are all sticking out mm -hmm. i like her a lot she's from sailor moon oh sailor moon oh my gosh that's a and then, that's going back i know right <laughs> and then she-ra and hello kitty basically like when i work with like preteens or teens I just I feel like they inform a lot of my practice now yeah and I'll make plushies like based off what they're interested in and like they've been really into Among Us so I did this like Among I don't even character. know what that is it's like some video game that okay um... strange <laughs> <laughs> I love the faux fur though yeah so did like what kind of got you into making the the like little stuffies in the beginning like um, was it part of like a workshop that you were doing and you were like i want to work with teens so i guess i'll do this or were you already interested in making like the toys i think i had all like always been interested in making them um because i remember i was interning at a toy studio and i kind of like learned they're they, i don't think they have them anymore but they're called shawnimals and so I had learned from them like how to make plushies and how to sell them. And then I just kind of used that to kind of jumpstart my plushie, my plushie career. <laughs> but, <laughs> but they all actually, they all really, now that I think about it, um, they, I actually started printing all of them first, like on fabric, like I would dye my fabrics, like kind of make like tie dye fabric and then print like random, like, giraffes and other monsters onto the fabric um and then like sew and stuff them oh okay cool. so they've sort of evolved then quite a bit since that time because now they yeah. are like there's lots of textures and different um types of fabric like a lot of it's felt right because I, I feel like when you were here is a lot of felt do you have like a giant stack of material yeah this is like felt and well, so I have this, so I have it, my like area broken up into different sections, but <laughs> I have like, this is where all my fabric lives in this like Jenny thing. Oh that's yeah. Also, that's also my therapy nook. So I have like Legos and markers. Um, Please. So it's all inside your house. Yeah, basically. So you have like a little, is this like a room devoted only to making or is it also like, you know, your living room? It's like, well, I live in a, in a one bedroom. And so my bedroom's off to the side. And then this whole, like this whole area is where I like have all my art and making and i have everything in bins right now because um another thing that happened with quarantine i was supposed to move but then that, <laughs> that didn't happen oh man 
COVID's been truly yep. the hardest. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, like, so here and then I created, like, a therapy nook. So when I'm in therapy, I have, like, Legos and other things to, like, make while I'm in session. And then also, like, I make sure to have artwork on my walls that, like, speak to inclusion and, um, like, diversity and such. And do you mostly do that with, like, teens? Is that, like, your main, like, group that you're doing the art therapy with? Yeah, teens and, yeah, like, pre well, preteens and then some older teens. That's, okay. like, that age category of, like, 10 to 19, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I had worked earlier with really young children at a, a group home um, so that we're in like foster care, state care, um, or they call it like youth in care and had done a lot of like plushy making, slime making. Um, <laughs> yeah, slime, so popular. <laughs> Glitter making and other just random things that they would want to do. I feel like it must be so hard because I remember you doing the workshop here. Um, oh, I Vanilla. totally forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> and you know, like I'm working with the kids and like, I just remember how like adaptive you were to what they were responding to or not responding to mm -hmm. and adjusting the way that the toy could be made based on what they seem to be interested in. Uh, and I'm assuming you're doing all of this online now. And I feel like that shift, that like separation of space, it's good that there's, you know, you can still do it, but mm -hmm. there is just something so nice about being in the space when you're making with someone and being able to, I don't know, like, respond to their body language and how they're feeling about the project. And I, don't, I just feel like that shift must be a bit of an adjustment. Yeah, it's been a weird adjustment. But that must have been, now that I, I think about it, that was probably like one of my first workshops. Like I had done maybe one oh, really? before. Yeah, maybe like one of my first or second ones. Um, it's like, possible. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, this is really fun. And then I think it just, like, catapulted into so many more. Oh, it was thanks. really fun. It was thanks. so much fun. The, my nieces still have their plushies. One of them, the, like, eye fell off and she totally <laughs> lost her mind because it was, like, the end of days. And then my sister mm -hmm. was like, you know, you can just sew it back on. Like, you sewed it on the first time. Yeah. So you can sew it on again. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, jump starting my teaching artist career. <laughs> we loved it. I mean, Sparkbox. this is our little plushie that we got from mm -hmm. Mikey when he was here. And we literally, this has been kind of like, I was saying to Mikey on like the chat before coming on, that I haven't shown this yet for flat files because mm -hmm. it's like become my little like surrogate Rico now that he's not here and I was like I just there's a good chance I'll start crying um so I'm not gonna really oh, talk God. about too much but like <laughs> it this has meant more to me than like I think you could even imagine mm -hmm. and now you will sit there and we won't talk about you but I really love it Mm -hmm. um so for our flat files what we do is we kind of go back and forth like sharing different things so we mm -hmm. have like three three items we've been sort of thinking we're going to cut down to two but we have three today um awesome. and then you have some items that you can talk about and so you get to choose who goes first us or you i'm going to say you all because you're better you're more tech savvy than me <laughs> <laughs> okay so we got a beautiful piece in the mail literally last <gasps> friday so this what? is by the lovely amory sanford she's in uh quebec I'm gonna write this is down. um a calendar project that was initially meant to be rezo because amory has a rezo <laughs> printer uh but then it just went kaput 
uh, it wouldn't work properly. I don't know the status as of right now, but um, there was a lot of time and money invested in trying to get it to work and it mm -hmm. just did not happen. So it got screen printed instead. And oh Amory gosh. does like these, like I just love everything about Amory's work. They're, it's bright, it's funny, it's like got this like really good like gesture to the mark making. Um, and Amory's also been making songs recently and I think put out a, like maybe a full yeah, album she was, like at last least was year. An album. Yeah. Um, so versatile and this one I really relate to. Like just, just watching like watching grow. plants grow. That one's so, it's so beautiful. Oh my god! I gosh. can't wait till May when we have green stuff again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so this was such a fun, uh, a little print to get in the mail. We're, we're going to do a trade. So we're going to send Amory something in exchange for this. Oh my gosh. Piece. I mean, but it's, you know, it's just spiral bound, like, you know, heavy stock screen printed. It's just piece. a fun little calendar. It's so beautiful oh my gosh I know. my brain can't handle it it's great and i think that there's like it's sold out but i'm not sure show september it's so good um and i also i think i mean i see these as sour keys on the outside i hope that's what they are and made me really want some mm -hmm. wow she's talking about like the back side of the print right it has like sour these keys. shapes that look like sour keys oh my gosh yeah a nice gradient you so, have such good taste. Amory also has some nice... Um... Can you think about October when we might have Halloween again? Yeah, maybe I... this year we get Halloween. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I... Maybe I know. not. I, I mean, I I'm just not looking forward. You know. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm assuming that every week is going to be exactly like this week. And then if there's mm -hmm. one where like, I can do social distance walks again with yeah. people, then... A plus, um, then that's just, you know, step in the right direction. So yeah, this is our first share. This like beautiful, so... like hand printed calendar for 2021. Yeah, it's weird that it's 2021. I had to write the date on something. And I first off, I wrote it 2019. No, I was, I was like practicing signing a new edition of prints. And mm -hmm. before I sign my prints, I always like practice on the artist proofs to be like, is this where I want my signature? And I totally screwed up. I wrote 2019 and then I wrote 2020. And then I had to like erase that and like write 2021 <laughs> because that's the year that I left <laughs> off it was 19, 2019. Oh, 20. man. It is, yeah, I mean, 2020 feels like it just kind of blended in. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it, it does. Very weird. It really does. All right, your turn. I grabbed a few things that I had around, just around my apartment. Well, one, I do a lot of trades with, I just found one, I, they do these like really cute stickers. Oh, stickers are my favorite. Um, safe, sorry, backwards. Safe, safe. space? Safe space. Yes, yeah. got it. And then I like the metallicness of those. This on my. <laughs> <laughs> I love your like. I stick my stickers on. I have no idea what that says. It pop, says pop, 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 pop on the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> similar to like, they're they're critiquing on like social issues too. But um, I'll send them like plushies and patches, and they'll send me like stickers and other cute things. Who is this that made these? So they they have two Instagrams. One is um, BBQ Witch, and that's Brandon. But then they also do um, another one, which is called Hills and Hills and Holler um, on Instagram. And they have like a really cool shirt that they printed called like Everybody is every what does it say? Like Everybody is a good body. So oh, again, I feel like of, I might have seen this. Yeah, they've Shared done somewhere. Yeah, I think it's been, I feel like it's been able to like circulate a lot lately and on the, on the Insta world. So like they do stickers and then textiles, but is it like, are they illustrators and then they outsource those things or do they also print the t-shirts? I think they print the t-shirts. I oh, can't nice. think off the 
top of my head, to be honest. But I know that they do like outsource stuff and then kind of um, similar to, I think, like how I print some of my things. Yeah, stuff. well, <laughs> I mean, I think what I love about your space is that a lot like a lot of people, I think, get worried when they don't have a big space, but they want to still make something. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh, I can't do it because I don't have the room. And you're like, I know what your space gets like when you start really like producing the plushies because the studio was like, I have footage of it. Like there's like, you know, there's a lot. It, it, it expands out. I feel like yeah. art making is like putting like lettuce into a bowl. Like it can fit in a little bowl, but if you put it in a big bowl, it still somehow fills the whole damn bowl. Well, that's a great analogy. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and so, yeah, I love that you're still finding the space to make, even though you're kind of limited to a very small area. Yeah, no, for sure. And that was also how I learned how to pack my plushies was coming to Sparkbox. So I used <laughs> all those, like, I remember I used those airbags, the vacuum bags. Yes. And oh, yeah. put them, like, stack them <laughs> in bags to, like, get there and then to come back. Yeah, um, I remember that. It was so efficient. <laughs> I loved it. Um, so that was cool. And I still do that today. When I, when, I mean, when the world is... Yeah, Hope when you again. when you get to go, I guess you haven't done any like fairs or anything like that at all. No, like, it just yeah, man, COVID sucks. <laughs> COVID sucks. Yeah, have you have you all been able to do any kind of like yeah? No. no, I've been since COVID. I think I've been in like other than my house, maybe two other buildings, mm -hmm. and that was yeah. like the post office and the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, yep. <laughs> like we haven't left our house like in like almost a year. It feels really weird. It does feel really weird. We I'm were like driving this. around yesterday. We went to mm -hmm. we went to Belleville to pick up some stuff curbside from Michael's, uh, mm -hmm. and like, you know, we we're going very fast, so, like fifty miles an hour or whatever. And I was like, oh shit, this kind of feels a little bit too fast. <laughs> like, I haven't been in the car recently, and I was like, oh no, you know, like the weird things about going out in public is, is I do like I still do some community based stuff so I have been out but not as much as in yeah. the past yeah yeah okay our second share is also I'm gonna take them out of the plastic actually it looks, something right. that we got in the mail last this week. is like an un unboxing video it's so exciting I know yeah. except for I don't have them in the packages because I get so worried about accidentally showing someone's um address email oh, here I'll, they're they're the same so i'll let kyle so these um are from louise flint who's a we've shown louise uh louise's work before uh printmaker in toronto who found um uh, a button machine that i guess maybe she had oh like gosh. at her house and uh who forgets that they own a button? I shop? love it. Or maybe just misplaced it. I'm not sure. It's in the <laughs> note that we got along with mm -hmm. the buttons. But Button Machine made a bunch of these, like, adorable little printmaking buttons that oh I just, gosh. like... They... So there's, so like, a levigator. Good. So that's for, you know, litho. We got some screen stuff. We got litho press and etching press. We got a brayer, a mezzotint rocker. Like, there's some, like, fun kind of weird ones on there mm -hmm. that, like, I, re I just really love them. They're so, so cute. And, and like, amazing. thinking about sort of, like, your, like, the work that you do and how, you know, like, making things accessible and sharing thoughts. I just mm -hmm. think buttons are kind of, like, an extension of that. Like, when you think yeah. about, like, patches and posters, um, like just these works that you make a lot of them and then you can like hand them out to people and they're sort of like low cost. So it feels like you can give people things. I just, I really yeah. like work like that. Um, yeah, they're so awesome. So I was like, Oh, maybe Mikey doesn't have a button maker and now he can get a button maker. And then yeah, I want to get one now. Yeah. Well, and I've done like print, <laughs> like one of the print projects I do with young people is, um, where they'll, they'll like carve into, oh my gosh, I'm blinking on every Lino? line. Yeah. They'll carve into it. Like they'll each take like a scrap piece of fabric and then kind of 
cut that fabric up and then carve their symbol or issue onto the lino and then roll it out and then do prints to kind of yes. like create their own flair. Um, I feel like I do that a lot actually. And I, I'll do with like really small children, styrofoam and like toothpicks. Yep. Which you all probably know, but yeah. <laughs> One um, time with like little kids, this is actually really fun. I, if, when you get to be with like actual, like a group again, um, we bought, so you can get styrofoam insulation, like large, like eight foot or I guess four, maybe is it? It's like two foot by like four, four foot, foot sections, like that rigid, like insulating a house, like rigid foam. Yeah. It's like pink mm -hmm. or blue, I think. Like those are the two colors depending on the oh, yeah. bar rating or whatever. Anyways, we bought, so we do, we do a workshop usually every summer. We didn't this, this summer with these cousins that come to the county. And so we divided them into two groups and we had one group work on one large piece with Kyle and the other group worked on a large piece with me. And we, they travel a lot and they don't mm -hmm. live in the same country as each other. So we got them to sort of brainstorm like what, what like part of where you, you live or, you know, what your family does or whatever, like means a lot to you. And we drew up like a sketch. So they all got to add a little bit. So um, the team that I had, a lot of, few of them were from London. And so we did like sort of this like meadow of flowers because that's like one of their favorite parts of London. And then mm -hmm. there were some like architectural spaces that they really liked. So they drew those. And as a group, they carved this huge, giant image together. And then Kyle's group drew, I think you drew the house that yeah, they, the house that they, they stay, stay in, in oh, every wow. year. That is and, so then, cool. and then they printed these like giant prints together by hand because they don't fit through our press. So they are all like, ah, like, you know, printing these big <laughs> prints with these giant pieces of paper. It was a blast. It was so much fun. And it got them to like think about how to construct an image as a group and like mm -hmm. really isolate what is so important to them that they wanted it to be included um, because we couldn't include everything, you know, they, and then how to put all of those pieces together into a unified um, composition that felt really nice, but still stayed true to what each of them wanted. It was so much fun. That is awesome i might yeah have, steal have it you. steal it yeah yeah <laughs> send me some um uh, bullet points on how you did that <laughs> yeah because it sounds it really great. cool but before i forget like we were just talking about like buttons and stuff there our friend kevin uh i'm gonna ask him about this he has this like website that he uses that he sends like images to and they make enamel pins so it comes back as like the shape of like whatever you sent it to them as like if you did like a little rainbow, it comes back as like a little rainbow enameled pin. And I think that like you'd really like this site. Like it yeah. seems really neat. I never have a reason to make pins, but I feel like you have a reason to make pins. Yeah, no, I've only made um, one kind of pin, which there we go. I love how bright that corner is. Yeah, I have to, it has to be happy during therapy. <laughs> <laughs> but I made these like little hints. Oh, pins yeah. From... So, yeah, no, Those I love that great. site. So great. Okay, so that's our, that's our so second share. share. Cool. Back to you. So, like, who should I do this? Okay. So, um, this is my pal, Sarita. We both teach. Lift it up a little oh, bit. We both, we, we both teach at um, Marwin together, the organization. Um, and so we did a trade. I did an animal plushie, animal crossing plushie for her. And then she gave me this like amazing print. Um, oh, it's like a little like um, rolly ice cream kind of cart. Yeah. Yeah. I dream of owning one of those. Right. So yeah. good. One yeah. of like our craft sale ideas was always to like get something like that or like the version Nobody with steal like a this. bicycle <laughs> and like convert it so that like when we'd like roll into the craft sale, we'd like turn mm -hmm. a crank on the side of the box and like it would pop up 
and like rise up and then like that would be like our shelving rack and stuff that would be so good yeah i still really want that so and then yeah no uh um, love this is it like a what kind of print is that do you know is it digital it's not i to be honest i'm not not sure <laughs> <laughs> i'm like can i bring it close enough to my phone so you all could tell but i know that i'm like wondering if it's rezo just based on the like dot matrix pattern yeah. maybe yeah, it I think feels I... rezo -y. yeah how thick is the paper it's pretty thick like um... i don't know enough about rezo to know if there's like limitations on paper weight not really no i don't think so no? okay I should, we should, i should have before I brought all my things, I should add. <laughs> I really like this print, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, they're um, super talented. And the class they actually taught was about monuments and um, reimagining monuments because so many monuments around, I mean, are tied to, like, such colonial BS. But yeah. her idea with young people was that they would make their own monuments and, like, kind of reclaim that idea. That oh, that's cool. actually really cool. That's such a great idea. I feel like um, also just like being a teen and being able to think about creating a monument would be such a joy. Yeah, no, totally. Um, Love that. It's okay. also like, I, I think it's like quite, quite remarkable how perceptive big like teenagers can be about what's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Like when we talk to like Peyton, our niece or Aiden, our nephew, and like they are, they are very up to date on the social political issues that are happening around the world, sometimes yeah. more so than I am. And I'm like <laughs> shocked by that. <laughs> yeah. That makes and, me happy. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, they have to be because they have to keep voting. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay. Our last share is a book. Um, so this is Leonard Cohen. Mm -hmm. And it's songbook. It's a wordless book by printmaker in Toronto. Um, George Walker. So He's kind of notorious as being this, uh, like, a, a very prevalent uh, Ontario-based um, engraver. engraver. And so oh. this whole book is a series of little tiny engravings, wood engravings, uh, printed that kind of illustrate Leonard Cohen's life a little bit. These are incredible. Yeah, uh, this is produced through like a small printing company uh, called the Porcupine's Quilt, which is like a group of Ontario based um, engravers that produce books, usually some it's usually short runs. But this one we happen to get from George one one craft sale, maybe like book arts fair, yeah. a book arts fair. And I just I love these things like he is like a fantastic engraver and it's just all these kinds of like um, moments from Leonard Cohen's life. So it says on the back, the wordless Leonard Cohen songbook was conceived as a celebration of Cohen's 80th birthday and was first published as a limited edition of 80 copies hand printed at Walker studio and Leslieville, Toronto. So we just have the like the reproduction. digital reproduction, mm -hmm. but the original like actual book was the like prints of each of these blocks. Um, so you're getting the original prints. Um, like in all the, saddle stitched together, perfect bound in a hand printed book. Yeah, and, and he, so it was an edition of 80, which is, I mean, how many pages is this book? A lot. <laughs> I think I, I asked George like how much like a, an original hand printed book is and it's like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I think it was like a yeah. thousand bucks yeah. or something. Like, like it was like we couldn't afford it. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we bought the $23 version. Mm -hmm. um, but George teaches at OCAD um, and has done a few other books of this nature. I think one is like a Trudeau book. Um, I wonder if it says what other ones are on here. Nope. But I do know that there's like several there more several that are ones. made. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> Wait a second. I yeah, feel like this backwards. is signed and also backwards, yeah. which is amazing. 
He signed Such it a printmaker. This is a wonderful little touch. Yeah. So I don't know if everybody knows who Leonard Cohen is, but Leonard Cohen's like a poet, songwriter. Mm -hmm. um, just, I mean, he's passed now, but. Very, very like loved and like a very wonderful, was a very wonderful human being. Yeah. Uh, Montreal. Oh, here, look, it says the Montreal born poet, novelist and singer songwriter whose career has spanned almost six decades and whose influence circles the globe. Thanks, George, for writing something so succinct and perfect. Mm. Um, <laughs> That'll be you all one day. I hope so. Being more succinct. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but I just like, I love the idea of a wordless book. It like mm -hmm. just really embodies the practice of print really nicely. And I think also talks a little bit about the power of an image. You know, you don't always yeah. need words to get the feeling. Um, of what something's trying to express. Yeah. Yeah. No, but that's an incredible book. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. So that's our third share. Yeah. That's Hallelujah really cool. indeed, Nell. Although I feel <laughs> like Cohen maybe like really at the end of his days was like that song really took off in a way that I <laughs> it was not what he wanted. <laughs> Oh, I could no. be wrong, but I feel like I listened to an interview with him where he was like, mm -hmm. yep, that was a that was one that people really grabbed onto. I'm going to have to look that up later. <laughs> You've definitely back. heard it. Mm -hmm. It's been remixed and copied by so many people. Yep. But look it up. No, All right. For sure. um, okay. The last one is just one of my, another pal of mine. Um, Justin and they're a queer artists and their Instagram is stay cool or die <laughs> <laughs> so here's Subtle. One, of their, Subtle. one of their images <laughs> and then they also make um, a lot of they're like I guess their icon is kind of like a pink tri they kind of like reclaim the pink triangle and they make I don't know what the pink triangle was before. So back, so. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, that's okay. <laughs> so it's definitely like a, a queer symbol. I feel like I didn't know as much about it until I was like able to go to grad school um, and like looked more into it. But so back in, okay, this is really sad. So back in the, ho during the Holocaust, the pink triangle was like how they would, so the I'm like trying to the Nazis would put a pink triangle on the arms of like um Jewish like folks who were gay in the concentration camps. Okay. So it's really has a really dark history. Yeah. Where it had started. And then cuz I remember I found, when I had traveled went to Berlin and went to one I was like that's kind of where I started being like oh that's where it, like originated from. And then during the AIDS crisis, queer, during, queer folks like reclaimed it for ACT UP. And so when you see the ACT UP shirts and like during that like whole movement of like, yeah. Yeah, they took that pink triangle and collaged it with ACT UP to create like a stark image um, to just kind of like push back, push up against um, the lack of funding and just like the the Global lack of care yeah care by reagan and bush and and then now and like and then keith herring had used it a lot in, in his artwork and then it kind of as generations go on it kind of um has just been like a i feel like a symbol of queer culture and um i think like a lot of my art practice has more so kind of veered towards that um from like starting with plushies to now being like, I really want to advocate for this issue. Yeah. Um, and so even like in this book, they have like the pink triangle here. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. What is that book? This is called The New Queer Conscience. And so um, Adam Ellie does a lot of like queer does a lot of international queer work these are they're called like pocket change collectives and so 
okay. each pocketbook has like talks about like a activist doing like cool things so oh that sounds awesome yeah. is this like is this a book that's like geared towards like that teen that teenager yeah. okay that's yeah. actually kind of cool that there's like a I, this is awesome also the size is nice yeah i i mean are I they loved, I, What's the inside look like? Sorry, I know we were talking like about someone else, but now I'm like, is it just writing though, or is it illustrated inside? I guess is my question. So it, it the inside is all writing. Um, okay. But you know, maybe I'll make a comic one one day. But Love it's really this. like accessible and easy to read, and like, yeah, I mean, there's each activist or person talks about, like this one talks about the binary, but they have folks who do like climate justice and racial justice and um, oh that's wonderful yeah i love that oh i'm i'm like uh, glad i learned about the triangle i've def definitely seen it before yeah. but i don't think i really like thought about it as like a symbol if that yeah, makes any no, sense totally um i thought i don't yeah sometimes i feel like that when i use emojis <laughs> i'm like <laughs> Maybe I'm a little out of touch of it. Like, I'm, sometimes I'm like, I want to put this, but what if I'm wrong about what? Like, I, this is what this means to me, but it might not be what it means to the world. <laughs> so, oh no, not buffering. Like, using images to talk. It, you know, if you have, like, if grammar is tricky, I know. Like, yeah, I don't like, oh, you might make a mistake. Don't put it out there. People might be like, what are you doing? <laughs> no, emojis are great. Literally, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I feel like that's how the Sims talk to each other. They only talk to each other in, like, bubbles. <laughs> I often think about myself as a Sim. Like, if the if I need to put the garbage out, but I, like, don't have time to do it, I, like, can actually envision, like, that little, like, dust cloud of, like, frustration, like, above my head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I really need to get this out. I get all stompy and mad yeah. in the kitchen. <laughs> oh my gosh. I really like those shares. I like that, um, the print too, the like little food cart print. I, mm -hmm. Like I want to look at more work by that person. Yeah, their Instagram is Sarita Danielle. Oh, cool. We're all, we'll get you to send pictures of each of these and we'll tag everybody so that they're they know that they've been talked about and we properly um, yeah. tag everyone that's involved uh, because that's important. And also like, I think what I've been loving about, um, about doing this is that there's so, there's just so much good making that's happening and it's hard mm -hmm. to be able to find it all of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if there's been many or flat files where I've known about the people that, our guests has shared mm, maybe there's been a couple that like we we know of their work i think like josh showed a todd print, yeah yeah mm -hmm. i think what's also interesting about this is that it's they're not gallery items right like, making doesn't have to have the destination of being a, in, a, like, in a gallery or in a museum like i think that there's a lot of wonderful making that happens that's just kind of like for your own personal enjoyment it doesn't have to be for an exhibition and or I think like this gives stickers. a weird platform for it. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you wouldn't have a show about stickers that have positive messaging. But they, I think there's something so wonderful about being able to put, like, a pin on your shirt or a sticker on your hard drive mm -hmm. um, yeah. that you see every day. And you're yeah. reminded of, like, that wonderful maker and then also the message that it's sharing. And, yeah, I don't know. I just really like it. Yeah, no, I love Flair. I think it's really cool. A cool way to get your message out and, yeah, to speak about your identity. And But it's really yeah. cool what you all are doing to, like, your commitment to artists and, like, including more folks into your community. I mean, that's really cool. Thank um, you. And exciting. It's, I, yeah, it's very important. I think it's really rooted in what we want Sparkbox to be, so... And trying to, I mean, yeah, I just feel like we've got to, like, learn about so many, especially zine artists and um, yes. printmakers in the U.S. Mm -hmm. There's just so many people doing really cool stuff. And, yeah. yeah, we don't get to go and do that anymore. 
one day we'll go back to America. Um, yeah, it'll yeah. be better this time around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sweet. Well, that's our that's our little yeah. our little show, and we're yeah, so well, glad that you got to come and join us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for being cool. My like tech issues and everything, and letting but me share. There's no tech issues. Okay, cool. You're good. This you is did excellent. great. <laughs> Um, oh. so we'll, we'll be posting this on our Instagram and then it will also go up on YouTube if people want to check it out afterwards. And, mm -hmm. um, we've decided that we're going to start doing like some shameless plugging at the end of these, because really the only way that we're like, at the only sustainable income we have right now to keep everything going is Patreon. So right. if anybody wants to take a look at our Patreon and become a supporter, that would be like greatly appreciated. Um, yes. cause our goal with these is to start paying the guests who talk mm -hmm. with us. That's like what we really want to be able to do is to do car fact fees for our guests so that this isn't just a su sustainable practice for us, but we get to yeah. make it, you know, a sustainable practice for others. That's yeah. really at the core of what we want to be doing, but unfortunately right now it's just not possible. Um, yeah, that's amazing. You are totally committed to economic justice. That's yes, really cool. yeah. for artists. We really want that. Yeah, we yeah. figure out how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. awesome. So we're so pleased that you got to be here and share with us. And uh, yeah, we're excited to shout out to those people after. And thank you so, so much, Mikey. Yeah, thank yeah. you all. Bye, Mikey. Bye.